Sri Lanka, with a written history of over 2,500 years, has a civilization expanded with enhanced indigenous knowledge until the 16th century. Dating back to 300 BC, Abhay Vava, Sri Lanka's first irrigation project continues to nourish vast agricultural ventures in its catchment areas. A glaring testimony of the uniqueness and sustainability that underline Sri Lankan irrigation science. Rice being Sri Lanka's staple diet, our people traditionally were rice farmers. They needed to store rainwater to cultivate the dry zone. The storage of this excess rainwater and release of the stored water into earthen canals with controlled velocities was a huge challenge. The invention of the Biso Kotua, also known as the Cistern Sluice, an engineering marvel solved the problem of high pressures and the excessive potential energies stored in water at these depths that affected the release of water. With an irrigation system that has thrived for centuries, Sri Lanka is now well equipped to survive and withstand a predicted deficit in usable water sources within the Asian region by 2025. However, the challenge to maintain the quality of our water resource continues to rise and this could be achieved only through a knowledge-based, sustainable, integrated water management system. Sigiriya, which dates back to the 5th century, is perhaps the country's prized architectural symbol of a historical legacy in ancient urban planning. Sigiriya today is a UNESCO-listed World Heritage Site. It's world famous for its ancient systems of transmission of water up and down the fortress. The Magnificent Stupa founded in 2 BC, have survived the test of time and extreme weather conditions as they continue to firmly stand ground, boasting of the superior knowledge and skills of the island's ancestral structural engineer. Many a times we as Sri Lankans witness these magnificent structures to be a celebration of our age-old culture and heritage. However, Hidden in it is a story of our ancestors, not only of their remarkable engineering expertise and phenomenal scientific and technological inventions, but also of their ability and keenness to promote sustainable development. Sri Lanka has its own indigenous scheme of traditional medicine. This system has been practiced for many centuries in the island nation. The Sri Lankan tradition is a mixture of the Singhala traditional medicine, Ayurveda and Siddha systems of India, Unani medicine of Greece through the Arabs and most importantly the Deshiya Chikitsa or indigenous surgery which is the indigenous medicine of Sri Lanka. The Sri Lankan mountain Mintale still has the ruins of what many believe to be the first hospital in the world. With the colonial incursion from the 16th century, Sri Lanka was increasingly exposed to Western technology. This Western technology was introduced as a package without any interaction with the existing indigenous technology. The Dutch introduced some technology with respect to construction of water canals, buildings, roads and harbours. But the modern technology era began in Sri Lanka in the 19th century with the British colonization of the country. For example, the first medical research institute in Sri Lanka was established in 1900. Since then, Sri Lanka has set up more than 60 S&T institutions, including 16 universities, providing modern knowledge and facilities for grooming local scientists and researchers. The latest addition to our research system is the Sri Lanka Institute of Nanotechnology, Slintech, and the Knowledge Park in the Trace City, 
which were set up as a public-private partnership in 2008 and 2014, respectively. The quality of our scientific publications parallels or is even better than that of India and Malaysia, as shown by a research landscape study carried out by the Elsevier publication in 2014. According to the Global Innovation Index 2015, Sri Lanka is listed as one of the top performers among the countries of the South and Central Asian region. It is then clear that we are an emerging nation in the field of science, technology and innovation. Since independence in 1948, the modern science programs in Sri Lanka diverted much attention to achieving self-sufficiency in rice, which was lost during the colonial periods. Infrastructure built by our great kings was abandoned or used for other purposes by the colonial rulers. Rice yields dropped to an annual average of 0.2 million tons during 1850 to 1900 AD. During the British reign, we started importing rice. Thanks to the efforts of the Department of Agriculture and the Rice Research Institute at Batalagoda in particular, which developed improved rice varieties and the introduction of chemical fertilizers as part of the Green Revolution, Sri Lanka achieved self-sufficiency in rice in 2005 by crossing 32 million tons of annual rice production. Motivated with a history that speaks of ancestors who have noteworthily contributed to its multidisciplinary scientific development, their dissidents now continue to grow and conquer the world as they combine the knowledge passed down through generations with modern science and technology. Professor A. P. De Silva, with his co-workers, he introduced the field of molecular logic and generalized the luminescent PET sensor switch principle. Professor Malik Pires, in 2003, he discovered the causative agent of SARS to be a novel coronavirus. He has contributed significantly to the understanding of the emergence, spread and pathogenesis of avian flu H5N1. Professor H.K. Vikramasinghe, a distinguished pioneer in the invention and practical uses of nanotechnology. He invented a number of novel scanning probe microscopes and near-field optical instruments and applied them to data storage and in-situ measurements that improved the yield or output of manufacturing lines. Professor Ravi Silva is the director of the Advanced Technology Institute, ATI, at the University of Surrey and heads the Nano Electronic Center, NEC, which is an interdisciplinary research activity. He was awarded the Albert Einstein Silver Medal and Javed Hussein Prize by UNESCO for contributions to electronic devices. However, providing all local scientists with a global opportunity remains our sole objective and priority. Being the primary United Nations organization, UNESCO has several institutions and programs dedicated to the subject. Some of the country's academic links with UNESCO include UNESCO Man and Biosphere MAB program, International Basic Sciences program, IBSP, Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission, IOC, UNESCO Institute for Statistics, World Science Day celebrations, STEPAN, Science and Technology Policy Asian Network, UNESCO International Bioethics Committee National Man and the Biosphere Committee supported by the National Science Foundation is the focal point for UNESCO's Man and the Biosphere MAB program which was established in 1971 with the support of the scientific dossiers produced by this committee, the Ministry of Environment in Sri Lanka was successful in identifying several forest reserves as international MAB reserves in the country. Hurulu in 1977, Singharaja World Heritage Site in 1978, KDN 
in 2004, Bundala in 2005, Mrs. Anusha Amrasinghe, Secretary to the National Man and Biosphere MAB Committee of the NSF. The International Basic Sciences Program IBSP is an international multidisciplinary program of UNESCO. The NSF has a dedicated working committee on basic sciences to support and facilitate basic sciences in our country. The National Institute for Fundamental Studies, NIFS, is dedicated to fundamental research in Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka is represented in the ICG IOTWMS steering group by Professor Samantha Hetiarachi. Vice Chair of the ICG IOTWMS since March 2015. With seven times more sea than land, Sri Lanka places a great emphasis on its oceans. The Ocean University of Sri Lanka, Faculty of Fisheries and Marine Sciences and Technology of the University of Rumuna, as well as the research institutions such as the National Aquatic Resources Research and Development Agency, NARA, carry out activities parallel to IOC of UNESCO. Samudrika RV, the only research vessel available in Sri Lanka, was launched to conduct a wide range of ocean-based research to provide the country with valuable information on the Indian Ocean. The ship is equipped with advanced technology and a research laboratory. UNESCO Institute for Statistics this is the primary source for cross-nationally comparable statistics on education, science and technology, culture and communication for more than 200 countries and territories. The National Science Foundation Sri Lanka provides the information regarding the science and technology sector of Sri Lanka annually to the UNESCO Institute of Statistics. Sri Lankan science technology and innovation space is also projected in the Sri Lanka Innovation Dashboard, developed by Costi. UNESCO celebrates World Science Day on the 10th of November each year. The Science Popularization Division of NSF, too, carries out programs to celebrate World Science Day with the participation of school children and university students. NSF Working Committee on Biotechnology and Bioethics acts as the focal point for the UNESCO bioethics activities. In 2015, Professor Anoja Fernando, the nominee from NSF Sri Lanka, was elected to the UNESCO Bioethics Committee and currently serves as a member. As we strive to grow, the Sri Lankan research arena will benefit from international collaborations and support on research endeavours that have not yet received such so far. Such global partnership, if promoted, would encourage local scientists to produce high-quality research, which then would benefit the country, its citizens and their genuine efforts to prosper as a nation. The anticipated consequences of this partnership are multilateral. While it is expected that global partnership will be provided for local research, we look forward to initiate more collaborations with the scientific organizations under UNESCO.